So that was this. And then we go to um, the template diagram. <coughs> Under web tutorials is where you've got all the obviously the web tutorials for each week. And the webcast is my kind of explanation of that section. And then there's the PDF document that goes along with it. Uh, let's look at this location and transportation. So what I've given you is a short history of urban planning. So there's a lot of information there. That's like the background to this criteria. Um, and then there's the reference tutorial, which models, mirrors the chapter of the, part of the uh, template. So for my tutorials that I walk you through, you'll see the headings correspond exactly with the template chapter of the template. So I'm giving you the context for all of these in these documents. I'm giving you kind of the, the highlights of the context. And you have to, you take some of this and summarize it. Use what you want in the, in the template. I'm kind of giving you that highlight. Um, giving you the context of, of the issues. And then <clears throat> you know, like sometimes there's a link in here. So if you see the that there's a video, watch the video. It's related to the food, you know, urban agriculture, integrating food networks into our community. That's one of the lead satisfies one of the lead points within this category. So there's a, a greenhouse project. Um, so this is the kind of thing, so I give you sort of an example, okay, here's a Stevens Point map, here's the greenhouse, uh, and, you know, it's just that simple. This is the, this is the agricultural hub for the inner, inner city of Stevens Point. Um, that's a greenhouse project, and the video here explains the project and why and how it actually relates. So it's really good little video, perfect. And this would be an example of how to illustrate that, that part of the criteria. I give you some concepts that are connected to the criteria. So if there's something in LEAD that, like LEAD talks about what's called the FAR, the floor area ratio. So any of those kinds of technical things that are referenced in the lead document, I'll put into here and kind of explain it, illustrate it as best I can for you. Um, I'll give you problems, like these are just general problems, design <coughs> problems that are associated with that category. And then I'll give you an overview or a summary of the main criteria pulled directly from the lead document um, or the living future challenge documents that i see applicable and this is kind of like little instructions so it's it's a summary of the criteria within the lead document that we're focusing on and there's kind of suggestions or instructions in there of how to go about solving that problem so access to quality transit, I say use maps of Stevens Point to locate all existing transportation systems, define hubs or nodes. So I'll, I kind of give you a, a lead in on how to approach solving that criteria. So access to quality transit is, is a specific lead um, part in the main lead document. So you'll see the cross reference. So you have to, really what you have to do is you have to have all the documents usable and you have to cross-reference the lead document with my web tutorial with the 
the live web tutorial and then the, the PDF tutorial that follows with the web cast. So, bicycle facilities, bicycle storage and shower room, these are just specific things. So, bicycle storage and shower room, that's one solution to have one page in your template that illustrates bike racks and a shower. So really all that's saying is to get those points, any big project has to have bike racks and a shower facility for people to shower. So you just have to come up with images, select a, a bike rack that you think would be nice, um, that's good quality, and do a little research on bike racks, and show an image of a, of a bathroom with showers, men and women, some kind of illustration of the pair of bike racks with showers, and then that's the recommendation to someone who's doing a, a planning of a building is they know that they need to have showers and bike racks to get those points, right? So it's kind of just broad, just a general idea. It's not connected to a specific project. Um, so that's that's this document. So I kind of walk you through all that. So the first project is just more like illustrating the best choices available, and then the second one is applying it to them. Or is that right. what you're yeah. Oh, I'm just saying like so. Project one is like illustrating the best choices, mm -hmm. or what we think is the best mm -hmm. choice for the lead um, areas. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is like applying it to a certain project. Yeah, so the first um, the first few that we're doing, location, transportation, water, energy, and the integrated process, those are just general broad ones. Yeah, that we explain and illustrate through project one, right? Yep. In the yep. Yep. Okay. Each chapter, you'll have a chapter on each of those. Okay. And then project two, we're going to take the next set of criteria and look at them together through one building shell and then site plan and then maybe. Okay. Well, we can still apply criteria from the first, like our case studies and stuff, and still bring that into the project. Project two. Because you said we're looking at certain criteria mm -hmm. and then more criteria, but we can mix them all up. We're going to, for project two, we're going to focus on four specific criteria. Sustainable sites, materials and resources, uh, in environmental, indoor environmental quality, and regional environment. Okay. So those four specifically, we're going to target for that project. By the end, we'll have all the criteria illustrated. And it all relates to our our, our students point community, our campus community, okay. um, and a typical the, the project too is sort of a typical there's just a typical site, typical building. If you're going to meet lead points, you need to approach it in this way. So it's just a generic building and site. You don't really have to design anything for it. You just have to illustrate how would the designer satisfy these points. Okay. So it's going to be there's going to be material specifications in there. There's going to be some site diagramming of how they would satisfy some of the site issues that that we're seeing. Um, and its impacts on the indoor environmental quality. So that's why we're looking at all of those together because materials. Um, site planning, indoor environmental quality, they're all interlinked. Like views, for example. Views happen to be under leads indoor environmental quality. But how do you have views if you hadn't also planned out the site? So it's just kind of identifying that someone who's going to look at their site, they need to know that to satisfy those other criteria, you have to identify where those views are going to be. Allow for views. Yeah. Do you think we'll need in the end to illustrate an entire floor plan, mm -hmm. or we can just talk about how 
looking at illustrating this specific uh, generic solution. You don't have to design anything. You'll have to, you'll have to kind of diagram out a site based on what the criteria are. So like again, if you use you'll want to just on this generic site plan, you'll just be identifying here are the view, here's where views are going to be. There should be a view to the south. There should be a view. There should maybe be a garden. And there's a view up to a garden, or whatever. Just that there are views. Yeah. Yeah. That way, if someone is then going to take that and design an actual building, they'll know. Ah, I have to identify where my views are. First picture, did that need to be something that was a building that we found that was already being certified or something in our lives specific that is like sustainable? For the definition, to illustrate the definition? Yeah. yeah. Um, it could be something that you create a custom image, or if you find an image that illustrates that definition nicely, um, you can use it. And you just have to cite the source. Yeah. But if you can find an image from Stevens Point in particular, that will be even more kind of appropriate. Maybe there's something, some aspect of what we're doing already in the community that is a good model for sustainability. Maybe some images from Sheep Creek or, you know, people walking in Sheep Creek or, yeah. you know, on the river. Yeah. What's that? Really bright on the other side of Stephen. You can see people walking and you can hear them talking too. <laughs> good. <laughs> Probably not good at certain <laughs> <Yeah>. times. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be commenting like on the introductions? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the thing here is like you can see all these deadlines or all these things as sort of like drafts. You get comments and then for the final you can update and modify as needed for the final. Really? So it's like you're not fully agreed to Not fully agreed. Yeah. yeah. Although project one does have a grade, but um, it's weighted. The final manual is really the weight, the heaviest weight. So, really the emphasis is there. So, for each client, as you were saying, like for chapter two, the bike rack and the showers, mm -hmm. that is a design solution. So, we're supposed to have more than one solution for each chapter. Or like you have to recopy the slide and paste it in again. You will. Or do we post them all on that one slide? Have a slide for each solution. Okay. So and for. Do you just need the design solution or all of it? You'll see the outline here and in the Excel file. So each oh. each item in the Excel file in green with points associated with it. That would be a separate solution for each of those. So it'll be like a contact from somewhere or whatever, and you can have one solution. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yes, one context, one summary, yeah. and then multiple solutions. Mm -hmm. And then more solutions get up to the next goal somehow, or better solutions. Any of adding any extra criteria in the yellow column? would get you into a couple of them. One of them is worth five points if you 